When I first got in the business, I'd gotten introduced to a couple of inspection companies that were okay, but then I got introduced to LaRocca Inspections and Steve Nichols, for specifically, has been my inspector of choice for all of these years and for the reason is this, these guys are super thorough and they're very detail oriented and they know their craft and they would always provide us a report right there on the spot they would sit down with all the parties they would go through these reports with us and be very um, you know very detailed about what it meant and what was involved and if we should take on further inspections okay so anybody that's ever that I've ever represented and I got a lot of clients in here that I've worked with uh, we've always used LaRocca inspections. Well, John, I had the opportunity of actually meeting John LaRocca. <laughs> I mean, I'd been working with the company for years, but I actually had the opportunity to meet with him uh, over the last year and a half. And he teaches all over the state. He's one of the most well-versed uh, professionals in the space of building, contracting, and inspections that I know in our uh, industry. Without further ado, mm. I want to bring John LaRocca up and we're going to get this class started. You guys hey, ready? Right. You guys ready? Yeah. 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 Okay, let's give John a good man. Let's do it. Let's Thank do you it. Too. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. All right. So you stick, you stick around? I am sticking uh, okay, around. Good. I'm right here with good. you. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, guys. Hi. So I'm glad you're all here. We're going to have a pretty interesting program. Well, I shouldn't announce that. You should decide at the end if this was interesting to you. Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. So basically, when you're selling a flip, it's like any other property, right? Looks like any other deal. People looking for a house. Oh, this one's all fixed up, beautiful. You know, they don't know the difference, most buyers. You just see a pretty house. You'll tell them it's a flip, but it's basically just another house they're looking for. Except this particular property we know has gone through a major remodel, right? You know that because you're, you're, you're involved in the business and you know. So you've got to tell them what's going on. You know, we had major system upgrades, it had cos uh, cosmetic fixes, a lot of things have happened at that particular property. So there was a lot of work done, so we got to get the details. That's the first thing you've got to do. Now, whether you're the listing side or the buyer side, all this applies to both sides, all right? And if you're the <laughs> listing agent, per disclosure laws, you have a higher level of responsibility of disclosure. So your knowledge of these things and your, and your research of these things has to be intense. You've got to really understand what was done here. You've got to get, get in there and get, obtain the engineering and the plans. Make sure that you see the documents. Make sure you, you look at these documents and see that they're actually available and that, that, that they're that the approved documents. Review the building permits and the certificate of occupancy. Because if you had a house that was just remodeled or redone, major remodel, it's going to have a CFO. All right? So you want to make sure they've got that done. There are some times where you won't have a CFO, just to let you know that, but you at least need to have the permit card. And I'll go into that in a little more detail. You want to supply the buyer, if you're a home buyer, you want to get all the original documents. And it's the responsibility of the realtors to make sure those documents are made available. Okay? Listing agent for sure has to be has to be diligent in getting these documents and making sure they're available. Okay? And Tony's gonna to tell you some stories later on on how that really can gum up a deal if it's not taken care of properly. All right, next one. Right, okay, documents, this is some examples. Engineering calculations, that's a whole page of document, documentation with, related to any changes that were done to the structure, and there would be an engineer document for that. Then architectural plans, which I just mentioned, the actual plans, and, you, and again, the, the original documents that are stamped as the approved set, and at least stamped with, a, with actual wet stamp, it says approved. Okay, building permits, all right? So you wanna make sure you have all the building permits that were pertained to this particular property. And building permits could include separate permits like electrical permits and plumbing permits and other documents, which we'll get into in just a minute. Fence, pool, drainage, all these different kinds of, of uh, trades will have separate permits. Inspection card. Now, I'm going to give you real detailed information about an inspection card. Most people don't understand what an inspection card is. But it's actually, a permit just gives you the right to do something. It just says, it's okay. You paid your fee. We know who you are. We agreed that you can do this. But it isn't the document that tells you it's all been done. It just tells you you can do it. 
right? So is everybody clear that a permit is really just, it's a document that says it's okay for you to construct this, but it doesn't mean that you have clearance on it, okay? You still have to have a final approval even once you've acquired a permit. So you can have permits that expire because nobody's done anything with them, the work hasn't been done, and the permit is just sitting there. You have the, in other words, you have permission. That's all a permit is. It's giving you permission to do something. Yeah, I think of it as, as basically a permission slip. You can do this. But that's the first step. That's not the end step, okay? First step is okay to do it. We paid your fee, we're all good. We're all good. Now, at the end of it all, and you have your, certificate, your inspection card signed off, you'll get a C of O eventually, certificate of occupancy. All right? Okay, so a little bit of information here. Here's a sample of an inspection card. This is, this is sort of split up into two. This is part of, the, of one page and part of the second page. Basically, you see here, it shows all the different inspections that were done, electrical inspection, the, the date it was done, it was signed off by the inspector, and you can see the framing inspection and ins installation, and then there's a final. And does she have a final? The job isn't completed, which means there's still an open permit. That's important information, all right? And then along the way, you'll see notes, because as he's getting things done, as the inspector comes to do the progress inspections, he's going to be signing off saying, okay, well, you know, do this and do that, and he's going to be making notes about it, saying, okay to cover, but, you know, leave this part open or something like that. He'll make little notes and make dates on those, and then he'll come back and he'll fix it and say, you know, it was done or okay, whatever. You see? It's a whole process, but you can see the project going on along that way, the date it was done, who came, what, the, what he said. It's, it's a history of the project, okay? If you just have a permit, you don't have any of this data, right? This has to come with that, beyond that. So full disclosure of all the work performed and the contracts. In other words, like you had a roofer out there. So this is a, a typical, typical flip. The roof looks basically okay, although the west side gets a lot of sun, so it's burnt out on the west side. So what do they do? They put a new west side roof on, and the rest of it's not done. And it's advertised as, you know, it's remodeled. And you think, by, the buyer thinks, oh, it's all done. But except for the west side, which is new, the other three sides are five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. They look okay, but they're a lot older than the rest of the rest of the building. And you, as the buyer, are thinking, ah, oh, I got a new roof. Right. right? It's just the assumption that we all make. So you want to get the contract, because you'll read the contract and it says, oh, let's see, roofing contractor, hmm. West side only. Oh, now you know. That's why you want to see the contract. Okay, see what was actually done. Okay, roof, foundation, plumbing, HVAC, heating systems, uh, electrical, chimney, irrigation. All these different types of trades will have their own contract and their own agreements and their own permits. All right, so a lot of documentation would go along to really fully document the project. Also, things will come with warranties. You have a roof warranty, right? You'll have maybe a plumbing warranty, whatever. I don't know which warranties, uh, which companies will give you warranties, but the ones that do, you want to make sure you get those warranties or have those available and make sure that they are able to be transferred to the new buyer. Because if you get a roof that was done by Mr. Jones, who sold the house, and you, he gets the warranty, but it's not transferred to you, five years later when you call up for a problem to be solved, they say, we don't know who you are. Yeah, we worked in the house, but you're not our client. We have no contract with you. We have no responsibility to help you. So you want to make sure that anything that had a warranty or a guarantee gets transferred to you as a buyer or to your buyer if you're the agent. Okay? You know, agents, don't be afraid to ask for these documents. You know, a lot of times agents will just <coughs> assume that, you know, they're going to transfer these documents over and at the end of the transaction they're going to hand over these, these elements. You got to ask for this stuff before you remove your contingencies. Okay, before you remove your contingencies, make sure you have these elements and don't be afraid to ask for them because they're going to be critical. If you don't get them and down the road you have some sort of a lawsuit and they're going to come after you saying you didn't disclose. Okay, so sorry. No, don't be sorry. That was a great, great interjection. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and another important, just an aspect of that, to kind of tag on that, if your person who you're buying it from is hesitant about giving you the stuff, 
What does that tell you? Red flag. Red flag. If they go, oh, we got all that documentation right here. Here it is. Here's paper, paper. Don't you feel really good about things? This guy really did his homework and he's giving you all the information you need. You, you get, the confidence level goes way up, you know? So you start getting uh, back off or a, a, a hesitation or, oh, no, you don't need that. <laughs> you need this, <laughs> okay? Oh, you want this. I mean, don't you want the warranty to go with you as the new buyer and for your client if it's your, you know, you want to ensure that. Because if there's a problem later on, you don't want, as an agent, you don't want the phone call. You know, you want, well, you got a warranty. Go get them. You know what I mean? Don't call me. I mean, not that you wouldn't say that to your client, but I mean, the viewpoint is, let's get the proper people to take care of it because you're not going to take care of it for them if you're the realtor. And then get a home protection policy. This is important because it backs up, the, it backs up your builder. A lot of builders, once the, once the job is done, they're gone. Untraceable, unfindable. Yeah, you got a warranty and a guarantee, but they don't even exist anymore. Get your own home protection policy. Because when the roof is leaking and you can't find the guy who's, who, you know, who's supposed to fix the roof, you better have a home protection policy that maybe they can help you. You know, pay them 50 bucks to come out and fix the roof. Then you can deal with the roof later on but have somebody to really take care of it for you quickly. And that's a couple of hundred bucks we're talking about here. You know, so it's really a valuable asset to have. It's a real valuable asset for the realtor. And I'll tell you why. Because whenever we have an, uh, a home warranty plan in place for our client, we are protected with additional E&O insurance. I don't know how many of you guys knew that. Are any of you aware that you get E&O coverage when you have an, a home warranty plan? And I'm sure that uh, Mindy can speak further to it, but the point is I personally will buy my buyers as a gift the home warranty policy because for me it's protection for not only the buyer but it's protection for me so I make it a policy and my team that we always buy the home warranty policy for our clients uh -huh. because we want to make sure that they're covered and we want and you know a year down the road you, you don't want drama coming back and the seller doesn't need drama coming back on them so why not just it's 500 bucks, maybe, depending on the type of coverage you get. But it covers you, and you can renew it or not renew it, you know, the, the, the buyer, the, the new owner, uh, annually. But the point is, it, it does more than just cover the appliances and the systems. It also covers you as a real estate professional. The policy has certain coverage and things that are, they're going to have limits on and whatnot. But it does cover a lot of things. And when you're in a pinch and the roof is leaking or the water heater broke or there's a plumbing leak, they're going to be there for that kind of thing, you know. I mean, there's some things they may not be there for, but or dishwasher breaks or leaks, whatever. That's actually their their bailiwick. There are areas where they they have limitations and whatnot, but it, it's still, for a couple of hundred bucks, it's a really good backup to have. I mean, it's a peace of mind, you know, as a buyer, uh, to have this information. You have someone that can help you right away. You know, one phone call and they're there. Okay, so. Reports. You want to make sure that you obtain and review all other inspection documentation. Anything else like geological reports. Maybe there was a geological uh, report done. And it can be five years old, ten years old. It doesn't matter. Geology doesn't change unless you have a major earthquake or something like that. Or there's a flood or there's some other major thing changes. Usually the a geological report's pretty, pretty good the way it is and will be extant. Unless, of course, something changed. And if you want to update, you get the report. Then you have to do, all you have to do is call the geologist and say, you did a report on this property and you give him the address and he, he'll look it up and say, yep, I got that right here in front of me on my computer. Uh, what do you want to know? You know, and you say, well, can you come out and update the report? They put some landscaping in. I want to make sure they didn't change something or whatever. You know, you have a question. They will come back out for a nominal fee and, upgrade, and update their report. You know, because the report can cost anywhere from 600 to 1200 bucks. And for a review of it, it might be only a couple hundred dollars. So rather than buying your, your own, you can easily get the one that they had updated because usually they're pretty, they're pretty good. Okay, termite reports. So any old termite or pest control report, let's make sure we have documentation from that. You know, let's, what was done, you know, two years ago there was this major termite issue. They fixed it. You got all the documentation, you'll know. 
property, uh, prior property inspection reports. They may have had the property in escrow before and maybe fell out, you maybe had a report from them. You might want to look at that report and understand what they found and then you can see whether they were fixed or not or whatever. You know, you, you want to see whatever, whatever documentation related to that particular property is and get information about, get information about it and understand it. And also uh, prior sewer or septic reports. Like in Burbank, I'm sorry, in, in, in Malibu, you know, there's almost all septic systems, so you're going to get septic reports each time you have a sale of property. Building permits. Because the house was built originally, let's say, in the 50s. So there's going to be a building permit from the original house construction. There's going to be other maybe possible remodels or adding a garage or whatever, you want to, which has nothing to do with the, this transaction that, you're, that they're doing now where they bought the property a year or two ago and now they're flipping it. Prior to that, there may have been a whole slew of other permits that were involved. You want to get that documentation as well. I, I just want to interject something here because I've personally had experience where we have been given a seller was very proactive and they gave us their inspection report that they did on their own. They gave us ter termite clearance. And I've personally recently, within the last 30, 45 days, have experienced transactions where the reports that were given us, uh, they were from the seller. I was representing the buyer. And when we had our inspector come in, our general inspection, because I always encourage buyers do your own due diligence. Do not depend on the reports that are coming to you from the seller. Even though they're great that they're supplying them to you, do not just depend on these reports coming from the seller. Do your own due diligence. It's so important. And I can share, I, we've got a couple of case stories that we're going to share towards the end, but I will tell you that it is critical that you encourage your buyers to do their own due diligence, get your own reports done. It's going to cost you a few bucks, but at the end of the day, uh, it will save you thousands. Okay, so. Yeah. Okay, so the buyer should do an independent search of the public records, too. You know, go down. It's, this is easier than you, than you think. Unless you have to go downtown. <laughs> that's, another, yeah. that's another story. Parking alone can cost you a ton of money. But, <laughs> but Van Nuys isn't so bad, and a lot of the other small cities, not so bad. But the documents are available. You can just go there and open up their books and find out a lot about the property right there, what the history of the property, what, what the plans are for that particular property. You know, we found out on one property when, just by going down, it's a property that I bought, and I said, you know what, I'm going to go look at this one. And I found out that they were going to widen the street and we're going to lose 10 feet off our front yard. Mm. Hello? Where do you go for that information? That, go to the Department, Department of Building and Safety and they'll send it to the right department. Okay? This happens, to be, that particular situation is called the Department of Opening and Widening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, the, that's the department. And because lots of roads are dedicated highways. They get wider and wider and wider as the traffic flows get bigger. Yeah. Okay? You better find out. I mean, I, I, it's funny, I was, tell, I was talking about a case that happened to, that I knew about. I was actually uh, in litigation. I, I was helping him out in litigation on it and did some research. And it was Rob Lowe's house, the actor. And he had purchased this house and didn't know anything about it until he went to sell it. He found out that they were going to, he was on Mulholland, Mulholland Drive. And Mulholland Drive is going to be widened, by the way. It's dedicated highway. Okay, mm -hmm. so anybody who's actually on Mulholland Drive is going to lose at least 10 feet of their property, maybe more. Mm -hmm. On his particular property, he was losing half of his pool. Wow. <laughs> wow. And boy, was he mad. Because he, oh. he was getting ready to sell the property. He didn't know, it wasn't disclosed to him early when he purchased it. Mm -hmm. Boy, did that change the value of the property. You see? I mean, it really changes the picture when you find out, oh, by the way, they're going to make this, this street wider and we're going to lose... 10 feet of our property. So you, this, is good, this is good data, huh? <laughs> you might want to have this information. So do your own research. But you can also, you know, go online. And I'm going to give you some more data about exactly how to do that. But go online or you can hire a permit service. And they're also available online. You go online, you get permit services you can call, contact. And they're very good. They actually do, most of them do a very good job of getting all the permits. And they photocopy them front and back so you have all the data. You know, it's a lot easier than going downtown. We're talking about typically under 100 bucks. And boy, is it worth it, you know, because they're going to do all the research and find all the information and then send everything to you electronically. So now you can 
email it to people and whatever and print it out, whatever. You, you know, when things are already electronically served, it's really, saved, it's really well. Yeah, so are you asking for them to find all the permits? They do. Yes. Everything. Yeah, yes. they do. Yes, they have general building permits, or you can go get electrical and plumbing and all the other separate ones. But the general building permits typically covers most remodels, but not all remodels. But but you can get all if you, even if you got all of them, you're still looking at probably 150 bucks maybe. I would say when if you're acquiring a property, or if you're representing a buyer that's acquiring a property, and or if you're representing an investor who's going to be flipping the property, I don't know why you would not want every report on this property from the time it was built. I personally, I just got a building and I wanted every, it was built in 1929, I wanted to see the first document. They're all handwritten because they didn't have computers back in those days. But get everything and have a file of a complete record of the building because when you get ready to sell it, you, you're going to be armed with this information and it's, it, it's, it's wonderful to have. Yeah. So. I mean, it's like when you buy a car and someone hands you the records of every yeah. single time they change the oil. You feel a lot better about the car when you know, you're buying a secondhand car, you know. But this is more, much more expensive and much more important, okay? And, 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 the, and the potential ramifications of cost factor to you is really high, mm -hmm. you know. Like I said, you lose part of your property. It's very, very valuable. Uh, you lose a lot of money. Okay, next. Here we go. So here's some of the things to investigate. And it's, again, it's on your paperwork, you know, looking for zoning, uh, conditional use permits, variances, easements, encroachments, planning department, future developments, you know, widening of streets and things like that. Or maybe that maybe they're going to make the zone around you is going to become R3, which is a multifamily dwelling area, and they're going to start building apartments all around you. You want to know that, right? You're buying this really beautiful house, and they're going to have five-story buildings next to you looking down in your backyard. You know, you want to know about that. So that's why you'd find out, well, what's going on in the area? So that's part of the, you know, future development stuff. And it's easy, these documents are easy to find. When you get down to the sea, you tell them, here's what I want to know, and they'll send you to the right place. Okay, so things like, you know, this, this shows you encroachments, like, or uh, easements. You know, a lot of people have easements, and they probably don't even realize it, where the Department of Water and Power can come on your property and, do, and dig and do all kinds of things. Did you know that? A lot of us have those. These, in, these uh, easements are there. They're in place. They're on your deed. So you should check that documentation. Okay? We all good? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so here's an example of going to the city and looking at documentation at the city. And I gave you the website, which is, uh, well, LA City, but all the cities have uh, a website with, this, with some of the information on it. LA has to be really good in terms of their documentation. So if you go to the permit inspection report, and you put in the address, you'll get all this information. It'll tell you, you know, the, the application and the permit number, you know, the, the, um, uh, the job number, the type of work that's being done, the status of that particular report, uh, or that, that permit rather, the status, the status as of that date, and then, you know, what was done. It's a, 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 actually, this one doesn't include the name, but actually a lot of them have the name of the inspector, too. If you click on this highlight here, if you click on this link, it's going to open it up to the actual permit, and it will have the inspector's, the inspector's name, name and all that stuff. So you'll yeah. know who inspected it. Okay, so now be sure that the buyers read and understand the TDS, Transfer Disclosure Statements, all right? Now, there's some liability in that because sometimes people don't fill it all out. They don't know what to, they don't know what to say. They say nothing. Or they say, um, which we'll get into, you know, never lived in a property, have no idea. You know, there is, we're going to get to that in just a minute. There are some transactions that are exempt from the TDS, like probate. Those transactions Bank are owned exempt. Properties. Bank owned properties are exempt from the TDS. Um, realtors, you should understand that this is probably the most important document of a real estate transaction is the transfer disclosure statement but you can never complete this for your seller. So if your seller, you give them their disclosures to complete, you know, there's a lot of times we call ourselves being helpful to our clients and we kind of pre-fill out the documents with putting the dates in and things like that. This is the one document you cannot touch. This is the, this has to be completed by the seller. So uh, that, I just wanted to throw that in yeah, that's because important a lot of to times know, people don't yes. realize that. Well, let me tell you how you're protected. You're avid, all right? 
So they say nothing. But you go, I was there, and I looked at each room, and here's what I found. So you have done your due diligence, right? The agent's visual inspection document. You got that done. So you're doing your job. If he doesn't want to do his job, you can't force him to do his job. You better encourage him to do his job. <laughs> but sometimes sellers honestly don't even know what's wrong with the property. A, they don't, well, we'll get into that in just a second. But, you know, even if they lived in the property, how many times do they crawl under the house to see if there's a problem? <laughs> or in the attic? Or climb on the roof? They don't do that. The inspector does that. So they don't even find out about some of these problems until the inspection shows up. And then they get a report that says, oh my goodness, you know, I didn't know there was a crack in my foundation. You know, because the inspector went under the house and the owner never did. Right? And which is not uncommon. I own a property. I'm a building inspector. I was under my house once 17 years ago <laughs> when I bought it. <laughs> so how do I know? Maybe, maybe it cracked and I don't know about it. <laughs> so if I didn't do it, probably nobody else is doing it. Okay. The buyer needs to get their own property inspection, professional property inspection, not Uncle Harry who happened to, you know, work, work as a carpenter for one weekend, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's really true. <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, yeah, when I was in college, I did some car carpenter work, you know. No, no, no. You want a real property inspector, okay? Somebody who really knows what they're looking for, knows what's, what's important to the deal, all right? Really important. And they should have some certifications. I want you to oh, talk yeah. a okay, little yeah, we'll bit talk about, about that those for a second. Cer so, certifications. You know, all professional property inspectors are part of some organization. CREA is the California Real Estate Inspector Association. That's the most popular. The largest one in in United States is uh, ASHI, the American Society of Home Inspectors. Okay, but because California has its own, most ASHI inspectors are also CREA inspectors. Because CREA is very specific to California with all the earthquake stuff. ASHI is broader and it deals with things that we don't even have in California like you know steam heat and stuff like that which is really rare here. Anyway, most professional inspectors in, Los in, in California will have California cert certification for that and you should get one that has that and if you're going to hire a guy he should have E&O insurance as well, errors and omissions insurance so he has that liability back up in case something goes wrong. Okay? So if you're calling an inspector you want to make sure you ask them if they have asked them for proof of their E&O coverage. I'm telling you guys, do not be afraid to ask these things because if they don't have it, you do not want to do business with them, period. That's my opinion. And I say that as the broker because I'm carrying the liability for all of these agents who are out here doing business and I don't want lawsuits. You know, we're, we're, we're really proud of our market center because we have a very low level of liability, but that's because we get in these rooms and we try to teach you guys how to perform out here and how to conduct yourself in a way that you're not going to get in trouble. So when I say ask for these things up front, make sure you're dealing with people who really know what they're doing and who have credibility and who, are, who have insurance, okay? That's right. something they have, that's something we can That's, something that's have. correct. They have to have that. It's just like I am covered with E&O, and therefore anything that I do is, is going to be covered through liability insurance. Oh, yeah. So you want to get the information yeah, up front. You want to get those certs. Yep. Right. You want to, have, you want to have access to that data, uh, you know, because it's hard, to, it's hard to get it. It's hard to get that going backwards, you know. So when you call, when you call a property inspector and you ask him, do you have E&O insurance, he should say, like, without any hesitation, of course. You know, and if he goes, uh, 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 well, then thank you very much. I have another. I'll make another phone call. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. You know, because it's expensive stuff to have, so you're proud to have it. You know, because they ponied up. <laughs> you know, it's it's not cheap. It's thousands of dollars a year. Thousands. <laughs> okay, because high liability. All right, ready to move on? Okay, good. Okay, so common unpermitted items that are found in flips. And even standard deals, okay? Upgrading electrical service. Adding lighting and other electrical issues. You know, people put in these new lights and whatnot. They have to get permits for that, and sometimes they don't, okay? Adding and moving and modifying walls or other structural items. You know, you start adding walls, moving things around. That's supposed to have permits for that. So because. Do they, do they have to go get them at that point? Absolutely. The builder has to provide, uh, go get the permit, 
go, go pay for a permit. And what that does, by the way, is that it's, the city isn't just taking your money because you're doing it. They actually are going to come out and look at it to make sure it got done properly. Not that they're going to take any responsibility if you don't, <laughs> because they won't. That's another whole story. But, you know, but at least, because probably if you're not a builder, you probably don't know whether he did it right or not, right? I mean, how do you know? Looks good to you. It's wood. It's up. He's got a nail in it. Looks okay. <laughs> And by the way, when there are things that are behind the walls, as you can see, all of these, uh, the yeah, wiring, wiring and, and plumbing, you can't see that. Once, you, once the walls are up and we've got it staged and we're ready to go on the market, nobody can see what's behind these walls. And I got to tell you, uh, even as recent as yesterday, I got a call from a buyer that we just closed on and they decided to move their laundry from inside of the house to the garage. And what they discovered, which could not be detected from an inspection, could not be detected from just a walkthrough, but what they discovered is that there was a bootleg bathroom that had been constructed in the garage and the, the, the plumbing had been capped off and stuffed with plastic bags. And there was this horrifying like mold of funky smell coming. And make a long story short, uh, they end up having to incur a lot more money with the plumbing because it's, it wasn't constructed, number one, to code. <laughs> so you don't know this until you start getting underneath this. But the whole purpose for getting these permits done, getting the permits, which is permission to build, and then getting them signed off is that the city's going to come out and make sure you did it properly. That's the whole purpose for this whole permit thing is you get the permit. And the permit just doesn't say you got a permit to have it. No, it's the permit is, is acquired to get the permission to build it. When they come out to sign off on the permit, what they're doing is they're signing off to say this has been done correctly. So you really want to see these sign-offs. And like I say, there, you, you can't see this stuff. So you really want to see sign-offs on things that have, are behind these walls. Yeah, for sure. Ready to move on? All right, so then there's things like adding windows. Adding windows needs a permit. How, How many people that? knew that adding a window <laughs> needed a permit? Yeah, see, some of you guys like knew, just, which is good. Yeah. And you probably found out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, okay, more things. Adding a skylight. Because you're cutting through structure to put it in. So you've got to reconstruct it properly so it doesn't fall out or leak, leak whatever. All right. Adding or modifying roofing needs a building permit. Or flashing, which is you know the connections around, around pipes and whatnot. OK? Adding, moving, or replacing water pipes, drain lines, or plumbing fixtures. I was telling. Yeah, <laughs> I was bring tell it up. We were talking about this yesterday. I said, by the way, this picture shows some, some incorrectly done work where we're looking at. Yeah, okay? does anybody know what's done incorrectly with well, this? Well, this, this is a shower. This is a new shower. <coughs> if you're not a builder, you probably don't know. The pipes are wide enough, right? No, the pipes are fine. Here's the problem. This is a, sh this is a, 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 a copper shower pan down here. Yeah. Two things wrong. Number one, it has to be 18 inches high, OK? And it has to be backed up by something, by plywood. Not backed up, it's not high enough. So that's not done, and it won't be passed by the city. But had you not got a building permit, it all looks great to you, right? <laughs> like Fine. what do we know? Until right? it starts to leak, which might be three or four or five years down the road. You know? It might get soft and start to leak, and because it was never done probably. But, you won't, but where are you going to find that plumber now or builder five years down the road? Boy, try that one. The permit services will basically research that property and get every permit that's available from the city. And there may be some things that were not available. There are things that have been burned in fires that are not lo no longer available. Yeah. Or when they moved City Hall, they lost some documents. You know, there are things that are missing. It's not a perfect system, but it, for the, generally it's fine. The other thing is, how do, some people are like handy. You know, and they Some people are handy, they yeah. They fix things on their own home, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they might, you know. They, they as a real, as they a real estate inspector, I see it all the time. Go ahead. put in electrical fixtures and things. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to have a permit to put an electrical fixture in a bathroom yeah. thing. Yes, you do. Yes. You do. Yes. You buy, you buy something at Lamps or Plus, you can't put it in yourself? You can buy things at, at Lamps R Us or whatever, Lamps Plus or whatever, that what, 
When you buy it, it's fine, but when you install it, it's, it's illegal. Well, you can't move the box. You can install a light fixture. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you an example of, of something that you can buy in a store today, and when you try to install it in your house, it's illegal. So you ever seen these little, these little strips uh, that you can stick up on the ceiling that have three light bulbs in them that shine down in different directions, right? Yeah. Track light. Track light that you Track plug lighting. in the wall? Yeah. Illegal. Yeah, because it's, it's a fixture when you affix it to the ceiling. And a fixture has to be hardwired. It can't be done with a plug. But, you, but, but what I'm saying is, like I, for instance, put like a fixture in my bathroom. And I am not an electrician, but I know how to wire, you know, a couple of wires together. So I've done something illegal by doing that, I think, because I should have had an electrician screw the wires No, together. you can do it yourself if you want, as long as you get a permit and you do it to code. So you have to, okay, you still have to go. Just get a permit and do it to code. All right. All right? If you do that, you're fine. It doesn't matter who does it particularly. I mean, especially a homeowner in California can build and remodel their own home, period. That's, that is your right. Okay? I mean, you know, you build, <laughs> we fought for that right, you that, that independence. Right, so. But you have to do it per the local building department codes. Okay? And get a permit to do it. Yes. Well, no, no, not light fixtures. If a light fixture is... Like this is a light fixture. Yeah. Well, you can't change that light fixture. That light, that light fixture is... Uh, you'd have to pull the whole thing apart. No, if... No, no, here, here, here's, the, here's the... If you have a chandelier, for example, and you want to change a chandelier, no, no permit. Because you're not changing anything except you're unscrewing the wires, you're putting new wires, and you're all good. All right? That's fine. But you change the location, or you change the size of it, or you... Now you, you, you wire it differently, now you've crossed the line. How about if I go, because I changed, I did all myself, I changed everything to dimmers. Dimmer Dimmer's no problem. Okay. It's because you're not changing wiring. Right. Okay, you're only changing the fixture itself. Let's look at the reality of it. If somebody decided to move the chandelier, the location of the chandelier, all right, and they did a nice job of doing that, and they patched it and painted it and all that, didn't say a word about it, and sold the property, who would know? Nobody's going to know, okay? So those things do slip through the cracks. And property inspectors aren't going to find some of those things until they get up in the attic, maybe they see the wiring got moved over from here to there. They might see that, or maybe not. Depends on where it is. The permit document actually says things like the address, the owner of the property, and all that information, and then the contractor, his license, and all that information, and what he's doing, and then uh, what, you know, what the job is exactly, and then they get approval for that, and they pay the fee. You know, and if it's a case of electrician, they have a green sheet, they call it, which basically shows how many fixtures and, we're, and, and you know, like these different si types of fixtures and how many circuits had to be added so that they can do the calculations of the city and, and at, the, at the counter, because two different types of inspections. There's a, there's a counter inspection where the guy looks at it and says, oh yeah, it looks okay to me. But then there's a field inspector who comes out and goes, wait a minute, that looked fine on paper, but in reality, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's two different inspections that actually happen. One is at the counter, there may be a plant check situation, and then there's a field inspection. And the field inspector can override the, the, the counter inspector. Okay? So that was a little bit far afield where, where we are here, but, but these things are going to come up. You know, these things will come up. All right? So changing plumbing needs a building permit. <laughs> okay. Remodeling a kitchen needs a building permit, especially if you have electrical, plumbing, or structural changes. Now, if you're just changing cabinets, no. Countertop, no. But if you change the countertop and then you move the sink and you have to replumb the sink or you're going to put a new dishwasher and you're going to move the dishwasher, yes, you need a permit. But just cabinets, no. All right, but as soon as you handle electrical, plumbing, structural, you need building permit. Okay. Adding or modifying heating and cooling ducting and cooling systems and ducting. Okay. So you got a new got a new heating unit right here, and then there's a vent going out, and then there's a duct going out. So all that stuff needs to be checked by the city to make sure it's installed correctly and it's safely installed because you have combustion things going on. Plus, you know, that vent has to go up and can't touch wood. There's all kinds of things that have to be made sure that they're done properly. Otherwise, you could potentially, it could work fine, you know? You move in, everything's working fine, and then one night you smell smoke, <laughs> you know? With the kids in the bedroom. Wait a minute. Now you're out. Now you're out in the street. You know, and, and you're wondering why the house is smoldering. 
So you want to make sure the permits are getting, are getting pulled and inspections are getting done. A carport needs a building permit. It's a structure. It can fall down and kill somebody. It needs a building permit. And plan check, of course. Well, plan checks is part of the building, building permit process. Certain things can be done what they call over the counter, where it's just basically something basic. But if you're building, if you're building this carport on, you, didn't, you didn't have to go to plan check. So this is attached. This is an attached carport, right? They added that on to the side of the house. Okay, what about if it's not attached? Not attached is this one here. Okay. Building permit. Okay. These are all building permit issues that I'm showing you, okay? And of course, a new garage needs a building permit. Patio cover, common that people add on the back of the house, put a little patio cover on it. Or, you know, it had a, it, it was an, an, sort of an open, open trellis, then they put a roof on it, it needs a permit. Because you're adding weight, right? So it all becomes, you, you change the dynamics of things structurally, and then you, you need to have it, you need to have it uh, checked properly. And also, the way it's connected to the house is also part of the, of, of the permit. All right, you want to make sure that it's properly connected. And the way it get, gets connected is part of the, the process, OK? Adding a pool or a pool equipment needs a building permit. A gazebo, not the ones that you're, you, know, you can roll over and just, put, and just ro roll on a lot and just stick there. No, this is built on site. You build something like this on site, you need a building permit. A porte cochere that's where you drive a car through, you know? So yeah, that would need a building permit. And then trellises and decks and things like that, which is one of the common things that a flipper might add to the house to give it interest and make it more, you know, more attractive. And fencing. Really? Fencing. Oh. This is an illegal fence, folks. Why is this an illegal fence? Yeah. No, it's too tall. Across the front of the property can only be three foot six high. Pretty much anywhere in LA. I have a big story for you on yes. this fencing. We're gonna, we'll, we'll say, we're gonna get into the case histories in a minute, but, oh, but this is illegal. Three foot six max. Now, is it done everywhere? No. No, it's done everywhere. It's done everywhere. I'm not saying, but it's illegal everywhere it's done. <laughs> but it's done everywhere, all right? And you're going to tell the story on how that kind of, kind of works. But if your next door neighbor has six foot high wall and you're the front wall, front wall. Side yard, by the way, it's, you also have to keep that low all the way to the front of the house uh, into the side. By the way, if you, if you go on the Department of Building and Safety, the LA, LADBS.org, uh, you can download the, the regulations and all this stuff. They have good pictures and diagrams and you can download them, and it shows you exactly how the fences have to be, okay? And places like Burbank, they have that as well, and you know, because a lot of people have this um, horse property, and there's certain regulations on where the horse stable can be, and how close to the next neighbor, you know, how far your, your, your horse flies can fly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Chain link or wood, doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, what about trees and bushes? Trees and bushes, too. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, a, yeah. it's a visual barrier. Can't have, you can't have privacy in LA? Oh, that's that's in my story. Let's we'll, get, we'll there. get into that. <laughs> this is this is a problem of huge proportion. Okay? Huge. But but here's the point. Okay, let me go back to it for a second. Here's the point. In this in this bubble by itself, okay, you can't do this. All right? Now, if it had been done 20 years ago and the and the trees got big and all, they're not gonna make you come down and cut down the trees. Okay, but in a new unit of time, you're buying a new house, and you have this is what you go drive up and you see. You you should know right now that's illegal. Now, if they can show you that this well that fence was there for the last 20 years and it was okay then, and they have some other documentation, fine. Those things can get overridden, and there can be changes, and th that can happen. But you better query this to make sure that there is a permit for that because you buy that property and somebody. Drive, some inspector drives along and he goes, what's that fence? That's, that's too tall. He'll go over and put a notice on your front door, little pink slip that says, notice to comply, fix your fence. And then what are you going to do? 
you got to fix it. Either you comply or you're going to hear from the city attorney. Or you, and you'll be fined. You'll be fined, and that will even be, turn, turn into a judgment on your credit. And, and let, me, let me bring up an important point here about all these things. Once you buy, what, the owner of the property is responsible to cure any problem found. The owner, the current owner of the property is responsible to cure any problem found, whether it be the permit changes or a variance needed or fines and fees. It's all on the current owner. You can't say to the, you can say to the city if you want, I didn't do that. It was done by two, two owners ago. I bought it this way. They're going to say, okay. That's nice. You're responsible. <laughs> you will take care of it. You'll, take the, you'll pay the fees. You'll pay the fines. And then go sue them if you like. But we're not doing your homework for you. That's the city's responsibility. That's the city's responsibility. Hopefully, the home inspector, hopefully your, city, your home inspector will, will tell you about it. Yeah, we hope that he will find those things. Or at least mention them, because this may have had a permit we don't know. So it'll be able to close, but this will come up further down the road. You may not be able to close you either. May, Tony's going to yeah, tell you all about I'll, that. I'll tell you about that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a different situation. Yes. No. All right. But just know that there are regulations for fences and there need permits. That's the important point I'm bringing up here today. All right? I don't want to get into all the details and the nitty gritty of this guy permit, of how, of how it works and how tall exactly. It, we, it's okay to cover generally, but you know, it needs a permit. So find out from that city in that area, whether you're in San Marino or, or, or in Burbank or in Santa Monica, what you can do there. Okay? All right. Now, all of the changes earlier, earlier, noted earlier, need building permits. All right? That's what I'm talking about. Investors who buy and flip properties often cut corners to maximize profits by using unlicensed contractor and by not obtaining building permits. This is not uncommon. All right. So without building permits, there's no progress inspections and no one to verify the work that was hidden in the walls was performed to code and is safe. All right. Flippers often do not get their own house inspection done when they buy the property. So they don't even know what they're, they don't, they buy his property and they just buy it and they say, well, we're going to fix it all up so we don't care. We're not going to get an inspection. But they don't know there's things under the house, there's things in the attic. So there's a lot of liabilities involved. You better make sure that, that uh, you get a building permit. If you're the buyer and you're going to flip it, still get a building uh, inspection, which we'll get into a little more detail in a minute. Okay. The most common misconception of a buyer when he sees a property that's fully, re fully remodeled, that is that all the, build all the systems were upgraded and, were, and, and proper city approvals were obtained for the work. Right? And you walk into a beautiful house, it all looks perfect. You go, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, I love it. But you have no, you're thinking that, oh, they totally renovated, renovated this house. Yeah. And you'll find out the plumbing wasn't done, the sewer line wasn't even checked. They don't know whether it's cracked or broken or whether it's leaking or whether it's, it's got problems with it, you know, deteriorated, because no one checked it. This buyer, this buyer who bought the property to flip it, he goes, Hin Weevil, see the Weevil, speak Weevil. <laughs> you know, I don't want to know anything, just sell the property. I want, all I want to see is profit in my pocket. So you want to make sure you do your own homework. Okay. Investors who never lived in the property will not be able to give you any accurate disclosure of the issues of the property simply because they're unaware of them. This was brought up earlier, right? They're unaware. They have no idea. So they're going to say, oh, I don't know. I never lived in the property. I, how do I know? It, how would the investor know if the sewer line backs up every six months? How would they know? You'd want to know that yes. as a buyer or as an agent representing someone. The investor would not know if the water floods uh, part of the property and goes under the house during the, during the floods. Is there an excuse for them? I mean, can they... Like, excuses? Really? What, Everyone, what I'm saying everyone's is, got excuses. Can you come after them if they say they didn't know because they never looked? First of all, anybody can sue anybody for anything. <laughs> all right? But how successful are you going to be? I can tell you, I mean, I've represented uh, owners and, and contractors. And one of the main things that the judge is going to ask you as a, if, you're, if you're bringing a suit is, well, what did you do to find out about it? You know, did you, what homework did you do? 
Don't come here and make him responsible. What about your responsibility? You, came, you bought this property, or you paid that guy ahead of time, or you, you know, what's your job? What did you do? And if you say, well, I, I, you know, I got a contract with him, I, I paid him what he asked me to pay him, it was the right amount, and you did everything right, well, now you have a case. But if you buy a property and you didn't do any research and any background information that has been, hasn't been, just been uh, uncovered because you didn't do your due diligence, you don't have a big, you don't have a big case. Okay? It makes it very weak. All right. So, the investor may never have seen the property and may, may be unaware of exactly what work was done. I mean, they, bought, they, they we have one, one of our, our people here today has investors that come in from out, of, from out of the country. They send their money in from out of the country. They have no idea what's going on. All they know is their property got purchased, it got sold, and they got a check in the bank. That's how much they know about it. Right? So how would they know? Was it done to code? Was the contractor licensed? Were the subcontractors licensed? Did anybody have E&O insurance? You know, they have no idea. The investor may not know, you know, what was done without permits, what, what unlicensed contractors were there. The investor should get a property inspection when they purchase the property also. They rarely ever do. So these are some of the pitfalls <coughs> that you're going to run into. This is the absentee uh, absentee uh, investor. Okay, now just a basic rule, and you have it in your paperwork. According to, sta uh, according to California building standards, no building or structure may be erected, constructed, enlarged, altered, repaired, moved, improved, <laughs> removed, converted, or demolished unless a separate building permit for each building or structure has first been obtained from the building official. To answer your question? That's pretty inclusive. And this is straight off the California website. I just basically cut and pasted it right on there. That's what they say, all right? That's pretty exclusive. So anything you do, enlarging. Now, things like painting, things like putting in new hardwood floors, a new carpet, and changing a fixture, like we said earlier, you know, just changing an old fixture from Home Depot to something more elaborate. That's, that's not what we're talking about. But if you're moving wiring and you're doing the things that I mentioned earlier, you know, putting in new, new plumbing, this is where, this is. No, I just said earlier, remember, I said, and if you're doing a kitchen and it's just the cabinets, no. That's just cabinets. But if you're changing the plumbing to accommodate the changes in the, plum, in, in the cabinets, that's a different story. Okay? Now, code, re, uh, code requirements vary, you know, in different cities and in counties around the state. So check with your local building department to find out what exactly, what permits you need for that particular property. All right? It, it, it makes a difference where you are. All right, so buyer must always get a general property inspection even on newly constructed houses. The buyer may wish to also <coughs> conduct specialty inspections to investigate specialty, uh, specific systems or uh, components of the property, including but not limited to sewer line, chimney, mold, pool, roof, foundation, plumbing, geological, you know, any, whatever, whatever is applicable to that particular property, and it's in your paperwork. So, you know, these are essential that you get the documentation and find out what you're purchasing. Otherwise, I mean, can you imagine if there's a sewer line problem, and the average sewer line inspection starts at about 300 bucks. A sewer line problem is typically more than 300 bucks. You know, you're talking about thousands typically. Minimum seven, eight, nine hundred bucks, or at least you would you would have save a lot of money right there if you just get, you find out about a problem. But generally they're more, the problems with, with sewer lines are very expensive, chimneys as well. I mean a cracked chimney can be thousands, tens of thousands of dollars, you know? And I can tell you for certain that people who flip properties often buy a property, fix it all up, and don't even look at the chimney except to fix the mantle. They have no idea. And then the home inspector comes for the new buyer, and he goes, by the way, the chimney's cracked. Now you got $10,000 to talk about, yeah. okay? So it would behoove an investor, a buyer, a flipper, to get these inspections done too. But a buyer buying this property better find out about these things. Okay, this is a typical example of a, re a request for repairs. So if you're, you buy, you're looking at buying a property, and whether it be a flip or not, 
you might find things that you want the seller to take care of for you. All right? So these first two paragraphs are really important from a legal standpoint. I'm not a lawyer, but I can tell you that this is a good way to handle it. You're asking them, or you're talking about the fact that per our conversations between you know, the buyer, Mr. S Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and the seller, Mr. Jones, the following items are to be repaired by, by Mr. Jones. We know now who's going to repair it. And uh, no later than the 15th of J June 15th, 2003, and prior to the close of escrow. Because this is timely stuff. We have to get it done prior to the close of escrow, right? So identify that in your request for repairs. And then all repairs, or corrections, or modifications are to be formed by licensed professionals. Building permits are to be obtained where applicable, all right? And a statement of the, of the repairs performed, invoices, and inspection documents are to be provided to the buyer as proof of completion. Yes? What if you don't want them to do it because you're afraid that the seller will use, you know, the cheapest guy and say, you know what, I don't want you to do the work, I want credits for the work in this amount. Is that something Of course. You Get credits if you want you credit. You can certainly ask for credits. Yeah. You are going to find some sellers that are going to be insistent. I've had a couple of transactions where sellers are insisting upon them doing the work right. or insisting upon... Uh, their contractor or their, you know, we, oh, I have two stories to share with you and that will be covered in that. Right, but without question. This document is the request for repairs and that means that you've decided you want to try and get them to repair it. You could also have a credit for repairs. Right. Okay, that's different. Okay. All right, so that, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, so, you know, then you describe what things you want done. Just describe them. You know, basically, you know, I'll, I'll give you some examples. I kind of made, I made this up. This is my own thing. I this is not for anybody else. You know, he'll beat the painting on the roof eaves along the back of the house. You know, it's just, you're, you want this done, so you ask him to do it. Now, that doesn't need a building permit, so you wouldn't need a permit for that. But you might want to have the painter's contract, so you know who did the paintwork, because if it peels off in a month or two, <laughs> you want to know who to call. So get the documentation. Because I can tell you, I own a property inspection company, and we get phone calls from people who we did an inspection for. And then they did a request for repairs, and then they want the home inspection company to come back out and verify the work was done. Yeah. All right? I don't want to do that for you. Because I don't know, really, what was done. Because they've covered it up, they painted it. You know, when someone paints something, all you know is what you see at the end. You have no idea how he prepped it. You have no idea what kind of you know, work he did to make everything proper and what kind of paint he used, unless I analyze the paint. All I can tell you is, yep, looks pretty to me, because you know? that's all we ever know at the end. So you want to get, get a contract that says, I painted the back of the house, I used Lucite paint, I prepped it first. You, know, you want to see some documentation. Show me what you did. You remember, we only did the west side of the roof. Important documentation to have, right? So you know. And by the way, that comes from a true story. You know, I mean, I went to this house, beautiful house. I was inspecting for a guy. And it, it was ooing and It was all beautiful. And I noticed there were some stains on, this, uh, on the ceiling. I went up on the, I went up on the, on the roof, and I see the, the, front of the, the front of the house and the side of the, one side of the house was brand new roofing. But on the back side, there was three years of leaves built up. And I knew that wasn't new roofing. You have to move the leaves to put the roof on, right? So I go back downstairs and I said, by the way, you know, uh, I heard you say there was a new roof. This is not a new roof. Oh, yeah, new roof. It's a new roof. Okay, show me the document. So they pull the document and it says, you know, north and, north and east side only. Right? But they didn't read that before they listed it. And the, and the listing agent and the seller had to pay for the rest of the roof to be done. You know, but if the inspector didn't find it, and they somehow hid it, they swept, the, they swept off the roof <laughs> and made it look pretty, they might have missed it. But documents are important, okay? So don't call your inspector to come back and look at it. Get the documentation. I mean, things like a heating system, a repair of a heating system, or air conditioning system. A home inspector can't tell you that it was done right. They can't, you know? And there's plenty of stories of, and air conditioning doesn't work right. So the cheap way to do it is to pump it up with new Freon and then leave. And a week later, the Freon runs out and you don't have any air conditioning anymore. This is absolutely done all the time, guys. This is common. 
okay? That's the cheap repair. The right way to do it is you have to find the, find the leak, fix the leak, and then fill it up with Freon. But did he do that? How do you know? How would I know as a home inspector coming back to check it? I go, air on, air off, looks good, right? But a month or two later, not so good. So you really have to make sure these things get done properly. The only way to know is at least to have the document that it was done. And if they didn't do it right, you've got their phone number, you've got their license number, you have information. You get it? All right. Diligent attention to details by all parties involved is the path to a smooth transaction and happy buyers. <laughs> That's the deal, guys. You know, due diligence. You know, do your homework. All right, now we're going to get into some case situations. This, these are some case studies. These You're are, on. These, these are fun, fun stories. We had privatized the entire property, and we had a fence that was about seven feet, seven or eight feet high. And we had buyers, we had multiple offers. And the people were just riveted by the property because it was private, it was secluded, it was completely redone, it was fabulous. And the only thing that hadn't been completed with respect to the permits on the property was that the, the inspector hadn't done the final sign off. And you know how they have the, uh, the, the uh, term temporary electrical poles on? We had the temporary electrical pole was still up, but it was scheduled to come down. But there was only a couple things that needed to be signed off on. And this final day, the inspector came out, signed off on everything, and he says, oh, by the way, got to bring this fence down. We were like, are you kidding? We're in escrow with three backups. And the buyers were buying the property because of the private factor. So sure enough, um, we thought, oh, God, we got to figure out a way to get around this because <laughs> we, can't, we can't get through the transaction if we got to take the It's going to change the whole makeup of the, of the entire property. And it will change the value of the, of the property. Everything will change when this fence comes down. And so sure enough, we went down to the city. I mean, but the first thing I did is I reamed the contractors because you should know this. Why? How do you have us out here marketing a property like this? And you've got this, I mean, I don't know. You know, you're, I'm expecting that you guys know your, your rules and your guidelines and your things. So make a long story short. The buyer, even the buyer went downtown and we were going for variances. I think I called John and I said, holy crap, we got this situation going on with this fence. We, you know, and he said, well, the variance thing can be a long process and very expensive. And the really crazy thing is we, we uh, I actually went down and met the, the inspector. The buyer went, everybody, we all went down with the group and we met the inspector at the property, right? To beg him, please give us an exception. Please give us an exception on this. And the inspector said, listen, he said, I really don't care about the fence. He said, but the truth is you're, you're asking me to sign off on, this, on these permits and give you a final. And this is, this is a, an area of code that has to be complied with. So I can't give you a final sign off. He says, now, and, and then, but, but there's five other, we even went all the way down the street taking pictures of everybody else who has these fences, right? He says, I said, well, what about all these other people? He said, you know, if nobody complains, if nobody complains, then we, we don't bother them. But if you're looking for us to sign off on final permit and you're out of compliance, then we have to call it out. So the buyer says, so you're telling me that if we take this fence down and then you sign off on it and then we decide to put it back up and nobody complains that we're going to be okay. And he said, wow. so that is part one of my story. I got another story, but I'm going to... They took the fence down. Absolutely. They put it back up? No, they haven't put it back up yet. They're going to put it back up. The contractor had to take it down. And that had to come out of their budget, by the way. 
Why didn't you have this done prior to putting the property on the escrow, or putting it on the market? Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm telling you, that's the, that's the catch-22. When you're dealing with contractors who have been used to doing certain things in certain neighborhoods and getting by with it, not every, you know, they don't get busted every time. <laughs> but they'll put it up for the, but trust me, I had an out-of-body experience. <laughs> 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 Don't you have to have final sign-on before you put the property on the market? No, no, no. There's two separate functions here. You got listing, listing the property, and then you have finalization of, con of construction. There's a lot of people who put properties on the market that are right in the middle of construction. Some people put it on the market and they tell the buyer, come in and let us know what kind of finishes you want because we're still working on the property. So no, you don't have to have the property You can sell the property up. from plans. Yeah. Exactly. Close you, having final, or we're not closed, but no, you, no, you can, won't close because you can't get funded. Right the, you can absolutely. The closing of the property and the building permit is two different functions. Two, two different, two different, two different functions. functions. Yeah, they're not, they're not unrelated totally. That's correct. So tell me, let's yeah. say I was buying it and I didn't care about the sign off, and I said, okay, well, we're not going to get the sign off. We have had that happen. No, I won't let that happen. And the reason why there's too much liability on us, there's too much liability on the contractor. The contractor didn't want to do it either. They were like, no, no. <laughs> because Well, the contractor you, couldn't do it because he, right. he has his name on the permit. That's right. He's tied to the permit. You're forced to take, take it down and then yeah. you, have to comp you have to comply with code, yep. and then he'll sign off, and then do what you want. Yep. Not, they're not going to say that officially, but... Like he said, I was at the Bellwood Hills Association of Realtors last week, and there was a city official that came talking about where realtors can put their signs in the street. Yeah. He, he was, you were there, right? Yes. And he was, he was pretty adamant about, you can't put those signs on the sidewalk, period. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come pick them up if you do. That's pretty strong words. And but he did say, he did say, but... <clears throat> I leave work on Friday, and I don't come back until Monday. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got to you say, you know. <laughs> so he's not giving permission, but if I don't hear about it and I don't see it, what do I know? So you can see that there's already, if you're working from the investor side of it, and you're really concerned about your bottom line, there's a lot of things you can do up front, you guys, that you don't have to run into these things at the end. Trust me, you would think, okay? But I got to tell you, there's a whole lot of investors out here that do, that do not do their inspections up front, and they do not go down to see what's really, I mean, I'm just telling you, it's, it's happening in a big way. And us as real, realtors who ha are not, don't have the experience as a contractor or a project manager, if you would, we don't know. You know, we're depending upon their expertise. That's why we hire them. That's why we go to them, right? But we got to do our own due diligence, too. We got to do our own uh, inspections and our own things. But here's the second part of that story. Same property. All right, this thing is built straight up from the, from the studs up, right? And we get down to the end of the transaction. <laughs> I'm laughing because... There's a termite, you know, typically the seller provides a termite report, right? But in this scenario, it's new construction. You know, so the buyer, this particular investor said to the buyer, we're not doing any termite. The termite is on you, right? It's all in the contract, in the purchase agreement. This is part of the investors. When they are selling these flips, they're going to tell you termites on you, right? So... The buyer is there doing their inspections and they decide, you know, let's just do our own termite inspection uh, and, and, and we'll see if, if there's anything to deal with since we're responsible for paying for it, right? So they, they, they asked me about a referral for a termite company. Our company that we work with was not available right that day. So they called somebody in the Yellow Pages, called, looked up online. You, you, 
Ye no, Yellow Page is online. <laughs> yeah, Yellow Page is online. You know, they Google them up and say, give me, give me a termite company near this address. <clears throat> so this company pops up. Of course, they're available right now. We'll come right over. And they came over and they did their inspection. And it came back and it said it needed to be tented and there was all this damage. We were like, how is that possible? This is new construction. This is new construction. What is, nah, that's not fun. So the, the buyer turns and they say, Tony, do you think you could get your people to come out and give us an inspection report? You know, a termite inspection. I said, yeah, but they can't get there for like a week, right? Or it's like four or five days. So finally we got our company to come out. This is like a $2,500 termite uh, section one. So our company comes out report comes back and it's the same and I said what how what is what I call the guys up because I know them. I'm like what if, how is this problem they said we can sh show you the pictures this is what's boop, boop, boop. this is woodwork that needs to be done here it was a major major woodwork but there was things happening with the wood that dictated there was inaccessible areas and they needed to tent the property so at this point, you know, the, sell, the buyer is just pissed because now they got to take the fence down. Now you're losing your privacy. Now you got $2,500 worth of termite work that you agreed to pay for per the contract, but you never thought it was going to be $2,500, right? So at the end of the day, um, and, and John and I talked about this yesterday, and I said, how is that possible that you have that much termite and you got, well, would you explain to him what you told me I'm yesterday? I'm a builder, and I can tell you that the termites come delivered with the lumber. They live in the lumber yards. Where's the wood? Fresh and juicy. <laughs> right? And I, as a builder, can tell you that we would take a piece of wood and we'd tap it to get the termites off or put it up and wipe the termites off and just put it together. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Did anybody imagine they get delivered with the lumber. that new <laughs> that the new wood comes with termite? Yes. New yes. wood comes with termite. Get it tented. Get it tented. So the investor before the, the, the investor should get it tented, right? No, it depends. It doesn't matter who gets attention. It just you just need to be aware. This is all this is is information for you to know. You see, for many years, I swear to you, I'm being so honest with you. 14 years in the real estate business. I never thought new wood came with termite. Okay? I just didn't know. I didn't know. But it makes all the sense in the world. So we can't assume that when we're representing a buyer and we're going to, to go for inspections and they, do, they tell you that this is new construction, we can't just assume that there's no termite, okay? So these are things that we're, you know, we learn through this process, but part of us coming to you guys is to educate you and share with you the things that I, I'm just sharing as I'm, you know, I always tell my team, listen, I don't care how long I've been in the business, I'm still learning every day. Every day I'm still learning something new. So isn't section one used to talk about the seller? This is section one is typically but but anything is negotiable. In this market again, it's 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 up in the air. It's it's totally up in the air. You know? Yeah. Plus, you know, there's all kinds of things that actually besides termites that happen with new lumber and new construction. But, but typically if it's new, when, I mean typically you wouldn't sec there wouldn't be a section one on new stuff, would there? Yes, there could, could be, be a section this, one. This is a perfect this is example. Exact, this is a perfect example. Yeah, it definitely happens. Yeah. I had a hand can you get compensation from the lumber yard? <laughs> compensation from the lumber yard, yeah, go <laughs> hey, go go for it. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had a hand back here. Yeah. Yeah. It's fresh and juicy. <laughs> fresh and juicy. <laughs> yeah. That old wood. They don't want that old wood. They want that fresh and juicy stuff. Don't they have termite treated wood? I mean, treated. Yeah. You could buy treated lumber, but you can't build a house with treated lumber. You'd be pff, way too much money. Plus, every time you cut the lumber, you have untreated areas. 
Now, now I'm going to share another story with you guys. This is also about termite, okay? Now, and these are all transactions within the last 45 days. So this is all current stuff, okay? Huh? Los Angeles. Both of them. L.A. Really nice neighborhoods, too. Okay, so now we got a transaction. I'm representing the buyer. And this is a flip they're buying. This is a flip that they're buying. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. And uh, we just go in and do our inspections. Of course, we call Araka. They come in. And the interesting thing about this transaction is the first thing that happens when we have an accepted offer, we're at a multiple. First thing that happens is we get a copy of their inspection report because they've done their own inspection. And we get a termite clearance. We're like, wow, this is great. They're giving us a termite clearance. We got their inspection. So the buyer says to me, Tony, do we need to even spend the money to get our own inspection? We've got their inspection here. We can just use this. And we've already got a termite clearance. But I said, uh-uh. We got to get our own inspections. Well, I, we really need to save money. And I said, please, get your own inspection. This is not your inspection. This is the seller's inspection. And you know, once we have the inspection, then we can determine where else we need to go from there. But we got our termite clearance, so that's fine. So let's just let's get our own inspection. So we did. And then LaRocca comes, LaRocca comes out, and they go through, and for the most part, everything looks pretty good. And they point out, and they said, gee, a lot of termite, lots of termite. And they, they said, you might want to get a termite inspection. <laughs> oh, I said, we got a termite clearance. We got a termite clearance, so I call Erica. I said, pull up that termite clearance, pull up the report. She said, there is no report, there's just the clearance. Oh, wow. I thought, okay, we don't have a report. Let's get the report, we get the report. The report says, blue, there's all this termite. But we got this clearance report that says it was all taken, taken care of. I said, well, we better get our own termite inspection. <laughs> because we now need to get another. Just like we did on the first property that I talked about, we got a second report. I always encourage people to get a second opinion, especially with this termite thing, because there's very, I've seen this a lot. Termite companies, sometimes these, they vary, these reports vary a lot. And you really want to get a second opinion. So sure enough, we uh, called our people, which is Center Termite Pest, and, Pest, and, Pest Control, and they are amazing. They went out, they came back, and that report was drastically different. I mean, just loaded, and it needed to be tented, and it was just this whole thing, and we were like, wow, this is crazy. They gave us a clearance. So at this point, we're, we're gonna prepare that request for repair, okay? And in that request for repair, we pointed out all the little things, and because they're investors, we know they got, contractors so the things that we knew that they could fix we asked them to fi fix those things but the thing like the termite we said this termite is drastically different we want our people to come in and do the termite work we want your people to stay home <laughs> and we want our folks to do the termite work you, you can pay for it but we want to use our company because that they had agreed to to do the termite in this particular deal. Well, as it turns out, uh, they said no. They said no. You cannot use your termite company. We're going to use our termite company. And we said, really? The same company that just cleared it? And now you want to force us to use this same company? So the buyers were flipping out. And I said, you know what, don't, don't flip out. I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let them do their work. But we're going to have our company, Center Termite, come back and inspect it. And so we put that in writing. That was all part of our negotiations back and forth. So we put it in writing. You'll get your people to do it. You'll pay for it. And our folks are going to come back and reinspect. And they said, yeah, that's fine. But we want you to pay for your own reinspection fee, which was 325 bucks for them to come out and reinspect this place. <laughs> well. They, they did their work. Two days later, this is a day before we're supposed to 
sign loan docs. And they did their work. My inspectors came back to check it out, and guess what? They were still termites. More importantly, they never tended the property. Then the good news was that Senator Termite took photos of underneath the foundation. Everywhere where the, the diagram indicated that there was termite, they had photo pictures to support it. And when you, whenever you do termite clearance work, and I, I learned so much about this during termite thing, just from this experience, I didn't know what, you know, um, what do they call those? No, no, the, 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 uh, the tunnels. They have tunnels, uh -huh. mud, mud tunnels, these mud tubes. You know, I, I didn't know about all of these things. I didn't know that, that where, they, where they live and how they travel and all these things. I mean, I, I didn't care to know in the beginning, but now, now I'm really knowing. But the point is, is that they took pictures. We ended up going back to the seller and saying, you know what, this is baloney. We're using our people. You're going to give us a credit. We don't want you to use your people, you're going to give us credit so we can use our people, and you're going to pay for that reinspection fee. Because this is insane that we've had to go through this. We lost like a week and a half or two from the transaction, jerking around with a company. Coming to find out, this was the first time they'd ever used that company. No. They had so never. Them, right. it, it, it just insane. Trust me, the listing agent and everybody, they were all like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, we're so embarrassed, this is so terrible, this, the seller was embarrassed. He never, it, it was just night. But this is what we deal with. This is real. These are real things. The last story has to do with this tree. Are you guys familiar with the oak tree ordinance? Yes. No. No. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I have a buyer. They find a property in Tahanga. It's totally in their price range. It's totally what they love. Property's been sitting on the market for 125 days. I'm like, what the hell is going on with this property? Because nothing sits for 20, 125 days unless it's overpriced, yeah. right? Well, as it turns out, this house has a garage that's fairly close to the house. In between the garage and the house is this oak tree. And the garage, oh, by the way, the garage is unpermitted. It's unpermitted. So my buyer is uh, uh, in the entertainment business, and he does a lot of, um, he's a sound pr mixer, producer, and so he's got, he has to have a studio and all these things. So the garage was a real important feature for him. And so he was, he was excited about this property because they had such a big lot. He thought, oh, there's like pl plenty of space here to the left. I can just tear this garage down, rebuild it, and uh, you know, do my thing, right? Well, there's this oak tree, and this was another scenario where I had to call John because John is out there in, in that in that same area. Was it Tahanga? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, and I knew he was very familiar with the uh, building codes and whatnot out there. But but I called John, and John said, "You tell what I said?" Yes. <laughs> tell him what you said. I basically said, "Why didn't the selling agent get all this data for you before you opened escrow?" I mean, come on. You were in the middle of escrow, and now you're finding out there's no permits. You're finding out there's an oak tree in the way. I said, why are you scrambling? You should have known this before you even put pencil to paper. Right. And that's the truth of it, guys. You, gotta, you, know, you really should make sure that you're doing your due, due diligence on this stuff when you're selling it. Yeah. Because here she is in the, in the middle of this problem. And I basically said, shame on them. You know, it's like, whatever. So. Yeah, we could not go forward with the transaction. However, we had already written an offer. We had an accepted offer. My clients were excited, emotionally worked up. We get to our inspections and then we discover that there's this oak tree and you can't move the oak tree. Protected. It's protective by California law. Yes. <laughs> Google it. Google, Google it. it. Google it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, by the way, you know, what the, you know what the worst part of the story is, besides the fact that they didn't get to buy the house? They didn't buy anything. They went to Hawaii and said the heck That's the it. worst part of the story. They lost a yeah. client. You can replace an oak tree, but it's a whole process. It's and the it's process. it's expensive. Yeah. It's not just, oh, no problem, you know. It's expensive. So you have to factor that into whatever you're doing. Yeah. And this particular buyer was going, look, I'm, I haven't got time for this. This is ridiculous. And they just basically walk away. Because they got a whole lot of properties to choose from, but you only got one to sell. That's right. He lost, and she lost a client. 
Yeah. yeah. Got so disgusted, went, yeah. just went to Hawaii. Yeah. Because he's a, he's a recording engineer. He can record things anywhere. Yeah. You know, That's these right. days, it's all done by satellite. Oh, you know.